Welcome to the Alumni Center at Cobb House. Um, my name is Kimmy Humphreys, and I'm delighted to welcome you all here today for our first Book Back to Briefcase Lecture Series sponsored by BBNT. Um, I wanted to start off with a couple of thank yous. I first want to thank the Alumni Relations staff for providing this beautiful venue for us. I also want to um, thank the Advancement staff who solidified our partnership with BBNT Bank. Um, for bon to Bon Appetit for providing our wonderful refreshments here, um, to the Book Bag to Briefcase Planning Committee as well for coordinating the event, and then um, of course to our generous donor, alumnus, and BBT Regional President Chris Holt. Um, we are grateful to everyone who had a hand in planning today's event, and without further delay, I would like to introduce Dominic Powell and Liz Snyder from BBT Bank to present on financial literacy. So thank you. Thanks everybody doing today. Get extra credit here up front. Is that uh, my name again is Chris Holt, and so um, today's actually really special for me. And that the uh, mentioned that I actually went to St. Mary's, I'm a graduate of St. Mary's. I graduated from St. Mary's College in 1986. Many of you might not have been born yet. Uh, and my wife graduated in 1983. My daughter graduated, uh, one of my children went to St. Mary's, he graduated in, in the mid 2000s. And uh, my brother went here, and my father was a uh, professor here on a part-time basis. So I've got deep, deep roots here in, in St. Mary's Seahawks. Actually, when I went to St. Mary's, uh, the, uh, it wasn't, we weren't known as the Seahawks. Does anybody know what the nickname was before the Seahawks? It's the Retrievers, or? Was it the Saints? Saints, there you go, Saints. St. Mary's Saints, there you go. And, uh, so, and, and does everybody know what the school colors were then? Orange and black. Yeah, uh, yellow and black. Yellow and black. So, but anyway, uh, we're here on, on behalf of BB&T. Is that uh, BB&T, by the way, is the eighth largest bank in the country, and that uh, we're about two hundred twenty billion dollars in size, and we operate in fifteen states, including the District of Columbia. And there's four things that we focus on in BB&T, and we start every day by uh, with our with our culture book. And you've got to have a plan, right? You've got to have a plan. And what we are in a purpose. Right? And so our purpose is we start every day and say, we are going to make the world a better place by. And we focus on four things. One, our clients. We want to make sure that our clients have economic security and financial success. Our associates, we've got to have a very strong team, right? Teamwork makes the dream work. So we're going to have to make sure our associates are fully engaged and make sure our, uh, that they're challenged. And we, we, we treat them fairly. Third is our communities. Hence the reason we're in front of you guys. Is that the, at the end of the day, as a financial institution, we've been in business for over 145 years, is we're only as strong as our communities. At the end of the day, business is a reflection of its community strength. And so we believe it's, a, it's our responsibility to invest back in the communities. And so what we're going to talk to you about in terms of this partnership with St. Mary's College. In the modules, I tell you what, I wish they had this type of program. I commend the career development team and quite frankly all the faculty at St. Mary's for getting you guys engaged. Also, I'm pretty dog doggone impressed that you guys came out on a Friday like this in terms of the weather and um, I had to, to spend some afternoon with us. But the and the fourth item is we are a publicly traded company and so we have shareholders. And so that's the other we want to make sure our shareholders get a proper return. So what we're going to talk to you about today is some of these financial foundations. And that the one of the, and so some, one of the things that at the foundation of everything and is that today's actions provide tomorrow's results. Say that again. Your actions today, today's actions provide tomorrow's results. So some of the topics that we're going to talk about, I want you to think about. Because we're talking about budgeting and planning and goals and things of that nature. And I will tell you this that the is that <clears throat> as you think about that, what you do today is going to impact maybe some solution tomorrow. So, before we get started, turn it over to uh, Dominic and, and Liz. Is that why don't you guys? Let's go to the St. Mary's. We've got a small uh, group here. Let's make it. Let's make it fun. Let's make it interactive. Is if you guys wouldn't mind stand up and tell me, tell us who you guys are. Who wants to kick it off? First. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Everybody, my name is Tashina. I'm from South Carolina, but I just moved here, and my major is econ. I'm looking for sales, but I'm just gonna put it out. There. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. Great to meet you. 
Hi guys, I'm Becca. Um, I'm a history major. I transferred here last fall and yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Caitlin Schoen. I'm also a history major. Um, I'm not, I've been here all four years, so. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, I'm Troy, Troy Moss, I'm from Baltimore, so like two hours away. I'm my English major with a minor in dance and ed studies with plants like the MAT program. Alright, thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Jessica Hayes, I'm a history major, I'm planning to work with community. Zoe, I'm an English major. That's about it. I've been here since freshman year. Hi, everyone. I'm Nashra. I'm a senior. I'm a poli sci major. Um, for what it's worth, I do have a share of BBNT. I'm also a client. There you go. That's what I thought. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Hayes. I'm a sophomore. Uh, my major is computer science, and I plan to do that in the government or military. Uh, I'm Madison Jones. I'm a senior, and I'm a computer science and environmental studies major. Hi, Martine. I'm a poli sci major, Spanish minor, and I'm a sophomore. <laughs> I'm Kate Shirey. I'm the director of the Career Center. Um, so I've been here for four years, but thank you all for coming. Hi, I'm Jenna. Um, I'm assistant director of the Career Center, and uh, thank you all for coming. I'm Laura. I'm not going to stand because I don't want to mess up this equipment back here. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm a psychology major with a double minor in neuroscience and literature studies. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm a junior and a bio and Spanish major. Hi, I'm Kathleen. I'm a senior in an econ and an English minor. I'm Izzy. I'm a senior. I'm an econ major, and I work in this office. Connor, I'm a senior, anthro major, museum studies minor. I work for the Career Center, but also I need to know about finances. That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's good. They all good. All right, thanks. I think that now, right, let's break the ice. Let's have some fun. I'm going to turn it over to uh, these to Dominic and Liz. Thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll introduce myself. So my name is Dominic Powell. I am a financial wellness consultant with DBST. I have been in the financial world for over 10 years now. I love it. I enjoy what I do. I uh, work with organizations, students, companies to be able to provide them with financial literacy education and guide them the right way. Everyone's at a different stage in their life, and that's why we're here today to talk to you guys about how to guide you properly when it comes to your finances and your financial future and goals. Hi, I'm Liz Snyder. I'm the market leader for the BBNT office in California, Maryland. I think I may have seen you on campus or something. BBNT spent some time here on the campus. Uh, we have two ATM machines on campus, but we come every year in August uh, for uh, the welcoming the new students. Um, so I try to come down here as often as I can. Um, I manage a team of eight people uh, in my office, but my territory covers St. Mary's County, which I love. I specialize in uh, small business lending and personal finances, so I'm excited to be here today. Thank you all for having us and inviting us here for this program. Awesome. Um, so I do want to start off with talking about financial foundations. So it's just a little worksheet right here. You want to take that out. I'm also pull it up on my computer as well. So Financial Foundations is uh, a neat program. It's free to you guys. All you have to do is go online and register. There is a website all the way at the bottom of the sheet. bbt.com forward slash smcm. You go right to the website. It's a dedicated website specifically for you guys. Um, like I said, all you do is register with the name and email address. Once you register, it takes you to a lovely website right here. Uh, there's 22 modules. It teaches you about different stages in life. When it is, uh, maybe after college, you want to buy your first home. Uh, if you wanted to learn about insurance, because you're unsure how it works. 
Uh, if you wanted to look at uh, auto loans, because maybe you either have a car now or want a better car or you just want to refinance your car, um, there's so many in here that you go by. Um, and every so often we add more. Um, I know back in January we only had about 17, then we had 20, and now we're up to 22. Uh, so we continually add more for you guys uh, because everyone is different when it comes to their stages of life, and we understand that, so we like to add more in there. Uh, so I know today we're going to be talking about the savings piece, but also identity theft as well. So I just want to go in a model just to show you exactly what it looks like and how it works. Everyone is different. We all have our own financial priorities, obligations, and goals. Figuring out how you want to spend your money and coming up with a plan to accomplish those goals is one of the first steps you can take to start improving your financial life. So, and it will continue. So what are your savings goals? They may be small. It will continue to go, and each one's about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on which one you like or which one you go through. And as you see up top, um, there's the introduction piece, there's savings goals, account type, start saving, and summary. So, typically, when you get towards the end, there's going to be a few questions, and some have a poll. Just based off of what you um, experienced in it, it will give you some questions. Just see if you're paying attention. Um, and then at the end, you can actually create an action plan and print it. Uh, so it's not going to create one for me because I didn't actually go through the whole module. Um, but it will print a PDF out for you so you can save it for future reference. And as you go through them, the neat thing is it will go through the whole process. And at the top right, I'm sorry, the top left, it will actually say how many you've completed. Once you complete all 22, you can actually print a certificate. Um, and you can show it to your friends, your family members, your other, um, your other uh, co-students around here so that they can uh, try to do some challenges. Like, all right, I'm going to finish five by the end of the week. Uh, but, but these are neat. And I, like I said, it kind of helps you through those different stages uh, because everyone needs some sort of education in life when it comes to banking in general, finances in general, credit. Um, I know there's individual things in here about using credit wisely, your first step, maybe your first credit card, your first auto loan, your first home. Um, but I recommend when you leave here today, you can log in with your phone, you can log in with your computer, your tablet. Now go ahead and log in and just take a course or two just to see and play around with it. Um, yeah, and so that, that's, that's Financial Foundations in a nutshell. Like I said, you go right to the website. You can share this with your other co-students. You can also share this with um, your other family members that they can play around with it as well. Uh, if you know someone in need, please feel free to let them know about this. Uh, so right now, we're actually going to go to our savings and budgeting portion of this. And it should be my list. Yes, yes. Um, I really hope you guys take the time to log in to check out some of the modules for Financial Foundation. Um, I recently was sharing with Dominic, I have two daughters, they're 17 and 18 years old, and my oldest daughter um, just started college this year. She, um, I, I made her take these, uh, these modules because they're learning so much in, in school these days. And I'm mom, I'm a banker, so she may not listen to me, but I told her about this new tool that we have, so I insisted that she take it. She learned some really great things, so, because um, uh, I, I, I won't always be able to uh, help her with all of her finances. Um, and one thing that uh, I, I really appreciate that bb and tailors that these modules for, um, as, a, as a banker, I, when I meet with folks, I try to fully understand what stage in their life that they're in. Uh, for example, you, you all as a group are in a certain particular uh, stage in your life. Um, for folks that are you know, maybe planning for retirement will be in a completely different stage, so their needs are going to be different. So it's just nice to... Um, uh, understand better uh, about you know credit investments and things like that and and, and credit is my specialty I do uh, consumer credit and business credit um, so at the end I will uh, certainly share uh, my personal information with you all so you guys can contact me if you have questions about credit but um, for today for this particular seminar we're going to talk about budgeting and savings do you have the clicker the the right. right. okay um, uh, budgeting and savings. Who here has a savings plan already? Does anyone have a savings plan? Um, who who would uh, like to share what your savings plan sort of looks like? How do how do you save? What's your plan? Anyone want to volunteer? Yes. I put 25% of my check in my savings account every period. 
25 percent. That's very aggressive. That's Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five percent. Percent. Twenty-five percent. And anyone else want to volunteer their their plan, their savings plan? I saw another hand over here. Back in the back. <laughs> They're like not twenty-five percent, but hey, you know, <laughs> mine doesn't look like twenty-five percent either. But everyone should have a savings plan. Go ahead. Um, I don't I don't put twenty-five percent, but I just put whatever how much I don't think I'll end up needing to spend into my savings. Does anyone use a, a budgeting tool or a savings tool yeah, like I Excel? Mean, what do you use? Min. Min? Yeah. Okay. Mint. 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 Yeah. It's yeah. Just so, an app. And, and it's good. If you don't currently have a savings plan, hopefully we will, um, you know, just just get you thinking of some other um, ways that you can prepare for savings or, or budgeting. Um, so budgeting and savings, creating a budget helps you manage your income and expenses, plan for the future. Um, and there's three steps to creating a budget for those that don't uh, currently have a plan. Uh, determine how much money you have coming in every month. That's your income. Uh, add up your monthly expenses, such as your monthly bills, your groceries, if you have childcare or other exp monthly expenses that you may have. Again, for different life stages, that's going to look a lot different. So your income and your expenses are going to change a lot over the next several years. Uh, and so basically, step three is subtract your expenses from your income. This isn't rocket science, you guys are college students, so you just take what your income is and and your expenses and you subtract those numbers and there you are and that could give you a good start on how much you can save. Um, I always caution my clients think about your monthly expenses but don't forget about some of those expenses that that may not um, you may not be expecting so we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in the next couple slides. Uh, if your income is more than your expenses you need to take a step back. You really want to look at what, what do you have on your expense line? What are you paying out? Uh, are, uh, you know, we always encourage folks to pay yourself first. Who's ever heard of that motto? I know a famous book came out a few years ago called Pay Yourself First. Has anyone ever heard of that? Do you know what the concept is of pay yourself first? It's not like if you make $1,000 a month, pay yourself $900 a month because you'd have to pay expenses. Um, but there, there's a lot of good information. A lot of people do use the pay yourself first. This is, but there, this is a really important concept. Mm -hmm. It's about thought wealth creation. So what Liz is talking yeah. about here, this budget and savings, right? These are these are all these are concepts I'm sure that you've probably heard or seen or maybe. Uh, uh, but in life, you may know do something, you may know about it, but are you doing it? You'd be amazed. Seven out of ten people in the in the United States, all different are going through some type of financial stress. So this budgeting and savings is real. It's, 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 it's what, at the end of the day, nobody likes financial pain. So the concept of paying yourself first, does anybody have any idea what that is? Yeah. Is it kind of like if you have assets, you, you uh, look at those before you pay your bills or the money you owe to other people? It's, it's sort of. It's, it's, it's right on it. So let me ask this. So, so some of you guys have jobs, right, in terms of which you work, uh, that you're working on. Picked up you put 20, which is very impressive, by the way, 25%. Is that the, why are you working? Fundamentally, why you guys, why, why do you do what you do? So I pay my bills. Pay your bills. What else? What, what, you have dreams? Goals? So, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not, this is going to do a bunch of our job on that, but right? The pay yourself is, is that the, you're working for you. If you want to create wealth, and you want to create, is it, is it so when you first get your paycheck, when you do your budget, when you help me do this budget, right? Is that you say, I can save 10%. I can save $100 a month. Well, that first $100, you put it away in some savings account that is in a, for your dreams, your goals, or any day fund, and you don't touch it. That's because you're working, right? From a mindset perspective, is that the, <clears throat> the wealthy people, people that are financially, is they pay themselves first. They know they're, well, the reason they're working is for themselves. Then they will create their lifestyle around what's, what's left. They, they, they say, you know what, I'm working for me. I want to make sure I can pay myself first. And so I can do, I've got more freedom to do other things later in life, or, right? Mm -hmm. 
I, and you know, like the, the first, the first uh, bullet point is pay yourself first by saving. Like Chris was saying, what what are your aspirations? How how soon are you gonna want to buy your first house? Or you know, Chris and I were just talking, and I, my my passion is traveling, so I always put away some money for traveling. But the the key part is to not confuse that with uh, pay yourself. Like I said, all this money, but you gotta pay the bills. The bills have to get paid. Um, but, but save money first. Don't, don't neglect that because your residual money will get spent on other things. And we're going to talk about needs versus wants Excuse me, over the next couple slides. Um, again, if, you're, if your income is equal to or less than your expenses, like I was saying, um, you need to decide what are your needs versus what your wants are. Uh, if your income is less than what your expenses are, you need to look at that expense line and kind of figure out what are your wants. Maybe you're eating out too much, maybe you're doing too much shopping. Um, uh, it, it's hard to when you're you know, going out with your friends, um, you, you kind of get carried away and probably spend a little bit too much than you want. But then does that, that means maybe the next week, maybe you kind of eat in uh, next week and not eat out as much. Um, so that, it's just trying to, you know, get you to figure out what your needs are. Your needs are going to be, you know, food, shelter, transportation. Um, and at this life stage, it, it's probably education is going to be a need on this, um, on that line item. Wants are going to include everything else. Like I said, you know, eating out, maybe some shopping. Um, uh, my oldest daughter decided, I was noticing she wasn't driving as much and her friends were driving her around. I was like, is your car broken? You just don't want to tell me. And she said, no. She goes, I just don't have gas money until my next paycheck because she's paying herself first via moving that to a savings account because she, she's uh, also helping to pay for her college expenses. So she's like, well, I don't have gas money. So you're going to have to come pick me up if she wanted to go somewhere. So she had to decide what your needs versus your wants are. Um, reducing your wants still leaves you short, then you know, consider ways to add income. Uh, some folks, I mean, you guys are going to school. You have, you're, you're contributing to your education. A lot of you have jobs. Um, and, uh, and it might be because it is a necessity to have a, uh, income at this point. Um, and some folks uh, have two jobs. I remember at a time I had three jobs at one time because that was a necessity for me at that time. So I had to come up with a way to add income because the numbers just weren't working out. Um, and I didn't have anything to pay myself first to save. Um, and, and stick with your plan. Be consistent. Successful folks that are successful with a savings plan is because they're consistent. Uh, I've heard some of you guys share your savings plans. Uh, you may need to make adjustments, but as long as you're consistently following that savings plan, uh, that that's that's critical. Hey, can I throw something out there? So you each have a household budgeting worksheet. I recommend if you don't have a plan, this can be the start of your plan. If you currently have a plan, look at reevaluating it to add some of these things in there. Because you may not know what bills or um, needs that you may have, whether it's now or in the future. And this will kind of guide you, there's the back and front on it, to go through this process. Because right now you may not be buying groceries, you may just be eating out every single day, or um, you may not have a car, you're transporting some other way. And guess what, when you buy a car, you need to get gas. So some of the things you have to think about that people do not think about, and that's what this is for, for you guys. Um, and thank you, Dominic. I was just going to, uh, that's a great segue into the budgeting worksheet. Uh, just wanted to highlight our last, uh, uh, our last facts here. The first 60% of your, com your income should go to essential spending, such as uh, regular monthly payments, if you pay rent or mortgage, um, insurance premiums. I mean, if you have a vehicle, you have to have insurance on your vehicle. Um, and medical expenses, if those don't come out of your paycheck automatically, and taxes, you know, Uncle Sam takes the, his cut first before you uh, know how much you have to spend. Uh, the remaining 40% may be used for retirement savings. That is very important. Short-term and long-term savings plans and maybe some fun money. My fun money is travel money, so always make sure there's some money set aside for that after, you know, of course my bills must be paid on time. Um, and like I said, in this particular life stage that you're in, you might already have long-term plans in your mind. Like Chris was saying, you know, if your plan is to have a certain amount of wealth, then what are you doing now? Like he said, what your actions today are going to be tomorrow's result. So um, I think it's very uh, good that you guys came to join the seminar for um, the college today. Uh, the household budgeting worksheet, and these numbers, you know, a lot of folks, like I asked if you guys had your own budgeting worksheet that you use, a lot of folks create their own Excel uh, spreadsheet, but I have found 
that this particular worksheet has been very, very popular out there in the community. Uh, one of the things that Dominic does um, when he's not doing these presentations, he's visiting local businesses and meeting with their employees and sharing this budgeting plan. Uh, so Dominic, do you want to talk about the budgeting uh, worksheet a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so some of the things to look at when, you, when you're taking a look at it is um, how much do you really spend? So I wouldn't guess, I wouldn't say, you know what, I, I maybe go to McDonald's twice a week, that's maybe $10. Um, actually pull out a bank statement. Actually look at your transaction history from your bank and take real data and put it into play. Maybe look back from January until now or last year until then uh, because you want to put it into real life perspective. I'll tell you, I did this a few months ago and it's different when you see it in black and white. Not just on your, your oh I just looked at my credit card saving for my phone, like oh I have X amount of dollars, I have to make this payment here or there. I actually looked at it and I was like, wow, like I'm doing a lot of spending. Um, so it kind of put into perspective, like, all right, what can I cut back on? Some of the things that I look at are, uh, me personally, was my cell phone. Do I really need X amount of data? Like, how can I save money in that aspect? Um, how about insurance? Take a look at insurance. Do you, um, have you, how long have you been with that insurance company? Um, maybe it's time to shop for a new rate. Maybe, maybe it could be cheaper. Um, or maybe are you guys getting a student discount? Like things like that that you want to look at and take take control of um, is the most amazing thing that you can do when you come to this worksheet. Um, I recommend doing this in the next week or so, um, and then maybe doing another one six months to a year from now to see if anything's changed. Maybe your spending has decreased because you're now actually looking at it, or maybe it's increased because now you're putting more money away. Um, so yeah, so like I said, I live and breathe by this. Uh, this is um, uh, a living, breathing document, so I can send it to one of you, so you can send it out to everyone if you want. Um, it doesn't have to be pencil and pen, you can actually do electronic copy of it, which we have. Um, so yeah. yeah. Think about that. So I'll tell you a quick, uh, that's a quick story for me, just recently, is that the, um, I, I was doing it, I said, God, how much do I spend at Starbucks? And so the, you know, I figured I get coffee every day. And so one day I just sat there, and I love the point when you put it in black and white, right? And I said, well, you know, I said, I don't know. I spend, I don't know, 50 bucks. Well, it turns out I was spending $100, over $100 a month times 12, $1,200. And so I said, I said to myself, we reevaluate. I said, do I really want to spend $1,200 on coffee? You know, is there, can I get something different? Like, can I, yeah, you know, should maybe I, maybe I should be making my own coffee, and so that's what we you know done. Quite frankly, as I said, we we're <clears throat> we we're thinking about uh, uh, my wife and I thinking about buying something or making a contribution to a charity, and I said, you know what, you know, I mean, spent twelve hundred dollars, and that was just me. You know, and, uh, for coffee. So those are the type of things in terms of budgets change. Budgets are just a snapshot in time, but they're a guide, they're a tool, part of your toolkit in life. Right? We're talking about is life skills that you. That, and and the more reinforce is a lot of these things people know, but you got to do them. You've got to do them, right? You, you may know about it. Yeah, you know, I know this all the time. I know I should eat that donut, mm -hmm. but and, and, but I do, right? These is so when you budget and savings, you got to. <clears throat> it can also be a from a communication standpoint internally, as well as with your partner, if you have a partner in terms of discussion, it can be emotional. It can be discussion. And you've got to take, you've got to, when you approach it, you don't view it as, you, you know, I'm gonna tell you, try to view the budget and savings things as focus on what your goals and your priorities are. And then things will be put into much clearer, ways. you know what, yeah, I don't need to spend $1,200 a year in Starbucks, because I really want to go on that trip. I really want to fly out to California to see my daughter. That's six hundred dollars. I can do. I, I cut that now. Then I said, okay. So when I go to get you know, go, to, go to that Starbucks, I think, so you know what? Now I want to I want to get that plane ticket to see uh, see Courtney. Right? Those are things that you could probably concepts you all talked about probably, but that's 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 what we're talking about. With, at the end of the day, when it comes to budget and savings. So. Uh, a couple uh, reminders: if you're looking at ways to cut expenses, maybe make, mix your own iced coffee <laughs> once in a while. May not hurt. Um, but you know, insurance. Always review uh, review your insurance. These are things that I sit down 
with my clients that come into the branch, uh, folks that I know, my friends, my family, I always say you really should review your insurance every year. Some of you may still be on your parents' car policy. Um, some of you may have your own car policy, but call your insurance agent every year. Say, you know, what type of policy is out there? Am I, am I getting the best kind of insurance? My, does my insurance fit my need? Um, uh, you know, some other ways, you know, cut back on some utilities, like Dominic said, you know, get your cell phone plan reviewed. Um, if you have your own cell phone plan, uh, there might, you know, they, they come up with new plans all the time. Sometimes they're a little bit cheaper. I learned a lot about Verizon this year and teaching my daughters. They're still, you know, they want a lot of data. I was like, well, you pay for your cell phone plan, here's your bill. And it just comes out of the household fund. But, you know, just come up with some creative ways to, to um, maybe, uh, save an, an extra twenty dollars a week uh, one thing you know we, we're you guys are very fortunate to have two BBT ATM machines you know for those that do bank with us they're not paying a fee for the ATMs so if you guys are out in town and you got you have to hit an ATM machine uh, likely that that ATM machine if it is not at your bank is charging you a fee uh, that in, in your bank wherever you're currently banking may charge you a fee so I mean it pees me to no end when my husband's out he wants to go grab lunch and he works down here at Webster Field and he's like I gotta use the ATM machine we're just gonna go down to Great Mills and grab lunch and I'm gonna use the ATM machine I'm like you did not just pay five dollars to withdraw twenty dollars that is just not gonna happen again that makes no sense to me and he knows I'm a penny pincher so just think about those things you know like Dominic was uh, saying earlier what you think you're spending may not truly be what you're spending. And I have used our BBT budgeting app on my cell phone, and it does track your spending habits. I don't think I spend that much money. But some, when it came back one month, we did. We ate out a little bit too much, and it said, you know, hey, this is your budget was this much for, for uh, entertainment and food. You spent over your budget. So I was like, wow, it is really telling me. So we might want to stay in this weekend. We may not want to go out to eat. I might just cook at home this weekend or, you know, go visit friends and let them cook for us this weekend. <laughs> Maybe I'll come visit Chris at his house across the water. Um, but uh, does anyone have any questions about budgeting or savings? Any questions at all? I hope you guys have learned something, at least a little bit new. If you guys have any questions, I did leave my business cards um, at the corners of the table. Feel free to call me or email me if you want to play around this budgeting sheet. We use this all the time. We use this for folks that are 18 years old, 30 years old, 70 years old. Always should have a budget, no matter what life stage you're in. Um, but if you have any questions or need help, feel free to reach out to me. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, can you all send that um, sheet, the budget worksheet to mm -hmm. Like the career center, so they can like a um, editing document. So yeah. if you want to have it electronically, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Great question. Thanks for asking. Anyone else? Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, pass off the remote to Dominic. He's going to talk to you all about identity theft. And this is, again, I might get excited about this because it's happening a lot lately. And I, have, I, I actually walk a lot of clients through this every week. I have someone who's talking about identity theft. Mm -hmm. and I'll tell you too, before we begin, um, back to savings and budgeting for a little bit. Uh, true story, when I started my career in the financial world, I was with the company, they gave me a pension, they gave me a 401k plan. When I left them, I didn't think twice other than cashing it out. I uh, got the money right in my hand, right in my checking account. I went shopping. I went shopping for myself. I put money out for a new car. I did not care in the world that I was saving for my retirement at that point. I uh, jumped, had no idea what I was doing. Um, and to this day, I really wish I would have saved it. Uh, because at this point, it probably could have doubled, it could have tripled, it could have, whatever the case would be, you know, nine, nine years later, I could have definitely had more than what I took out. Um, not only I took a tax tax credit um, tax hit as well. So it was the the program that we have is to help those who don't make those mistakes. So you don't have to go through that. So you have someone that you can reach out to when it comes to hey, I have my first job, I have a four hundred one k plan, I have no idea what I'm doing. How much should I put in? Should I start it? Should I have an IRA? Should should I even have a savings account? Those questions that we want you guys to start thinking about in your head when you start moving those different life stages in your house. Uh, maybe when you start to build your family, when you start to build, uh, maybe you're, you're going to have a child, or whatever the case would be, like start thinking about those questions. What's next? How does my income get impacted based, based on my life's changes and what I'm doing today and those actions? Uh, so I'll leave that at that. Uh, 
So identity theft. Um, we're going to talk about identity theft. What is identity theft? How does it happen? What can you do about it? And how can you learn more? So the next slide is about what it is. Who can tell me in their own words what identity theft is? Take a guess. And, and a guess. No you can shout it out if you want. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, someone using your personal information to access your money or passwords to hack into other Exactly. Exactly. Has anything that's happened to any of you guys? Okay. okay. It's happened to me as well. It's happened to me as well. Uh, so yeah, it, it can it can happen with getting your social security number. Someone calling you thinking they're from IRS saying, hey, and that's a popular one right now, so watch out. Um, say, we're from IRS, you didn't file your taxes this year, um, you're going to have a huge fine. We need your social, your name, your address, all your information about you. Um, anything we need to, to get either a credit card in your name, a loan in your name. Once they have that information, it's done. Like, you're, you're, you gave it out to the world, um, they can sell it. They may not use it today, they may wait a year from now, they may wait five months from now. Uh, so it's very important that you keep social security number, your student ID number, um, things like that that identify specifically to you, private, confidential, lock it away, don't carry your social security card around, don't hide it in the back of a drawer, maybe get a safe, maybe put it into a safe deposit box, uh, put it into places to where maybe you can remember what that number is, but don't share it with someone, don't give it to anyone. Uh, give it to a trusted source, such as if you were to open an account with a bank, or if you get a new cell phone, or if you're applying for a loan, things like that, they're going to want it, so you're going to want to trust them. Uh, but individuals that maybe walk up to you on the street, or call you on the phone, they're like, hey, your cell phone bill didn't get paid, I need your social so I can find your account. Guess what? They've already found your account because they have your phone number. That's how, they, that's how they're calling you. They already have your profile up in the system. They may verify your last four years social. That may be okay, depending on who's calling you. Uh, but never give out your whole entire social unless if you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Um, so how does it happen? Uh, so some of the things uh, people will do is dumpster dive. That is uh, just taking papers, maybe write your information on it. You went to the doctors, you have your doctor information. Oh, I don't need this, just toss it in the trash. Uh, maybe your new uh, debit card, credit card came in the mail, has your account number on it. You said, I don't need this, you throw it away. Um, one of the things you want to do is make sure you can shred all your confidential information, or at least keep it if you don't want to shred it. Um, black it out. I know there's a rule with numbers that you can make each number an eight, uh, and if you've ever heard of this. Um, even if it's a one, you draw an eight around it, so you can't tell what the number is. So if it's a four, you make an eight. If it's a nine, you make an eight. All the numbers, you make it an eight, so you cannot um, tell what the number is at the end of the day. So if it's black, you want to use black. If it's a uh, marker, sometimes you can still see a pen through a marker. Uh, so you just got to be careful. Uh, make sure you keep your purse or your wallet close to you. Um, people can steal your mail. Uh, phishing. So who knows what phishing is when it comes to emails? Yeah, exactly. So you may get an email from the school. Hey, your um, email account got hacked. You have to push this link because we need you to uh, put in your new password and uh, your email address or confirm it's you. But really, the link that you're clicking, if you hoover over it, um, hover, hoover, over it, um, it will give you a, a link. You might want to look at that link to see what it is. Uh, it could be, you know, fakescam.com or something like that. But really, really look at a link as an example, I'll go all the way to the end, like right there, annualcreditreport.com. When you put your mouse over it, it should pop up again in a white box that says www.annualcreditreport.com. If it's fake, it will pop up and say something other than that website that it's showing to you. So that's what you want to look at, and you want to be very careful um, when you click links that come to your email or your work email or someone else's email account, because what they're doing is they're, they're you're clicking it and you're giving whoever sent you that email access to whatever's on your phone, whatever's on your computer, uh, whatever's in your email box. So there's different things that people will take. Uh, and then records from their employers. Um, oh, well, can I add one thing about the emails? Please uh, Just wanted to remind everyone, have you guys ever received an email where you noticed a spelling error or a grammatical error that just didn't make sense? 
Uh, I, it happens a lot. You're probably going to see a lot more of that since there's a lot of um, identity theft going on. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. If it doesn't, if you can read it and you're like, that's not a proper grammar, then likely it's not coming from a reputable source. Um, also, you could uh, misspellings a lot of times, uh, mispunctuation. Uh, I mean, you guys are all very smart, so I'm sure you can see that you know punctuation is just not right. It doesn't make sense. Uh, just assume that that is uh, a spam. So don't open the links, like Dominic was saying, and you know hover over it, make sure it's legit. But that'll be a good way to not get yourself caught to a fraudulent email. Yes, Even with like opening the email, does that hurt you? Like if you can tell like it's a spam email and you open it, can that hurt you as well? It can, but it's not as harmful as you downloading maybe a link that's in there or pushing the link. Um, some of the things that we do internally with our with our job is if we receive something like that, we actually send it somewhere. And there's a website you can actually send it to so that um, they can track it. But we we can't push the link. Uh, but ultimately, if you download what's in the email, whether it's a PDF, whether it's oh check out my new baby, click on the photo, um, whatever it downloads is now on your phone. So something called malware, which they can add to your phone. Uh, so ultimately, like looking at the email and like not clicking anything is essentially okay. You just want to immediately delete it out of your um, inbox and out of your trash. Or if you have that web or that email address that you can forward it to, that would be awesome as well. And financial institutions sometimes will ask you to you know contact your local bank. My clients know that to expect a personal email from me, but a lot of times they'll just call and say, hey, I I, I got this email. Is this legit? I mean, don't be afraid to contact you know. So, you know, your, your local bank or, um, you know, the school, just to make sure it's legit. Always check the source better, say than sorry. Yeah, and, and you kind of know what you might have signed up for or uh, maybe just sign up for Pandora or Spotify. Like, you're going to get a welcome email. You're going to get something saying, this is your new account, or confirm your new account. But if you know you didn't sign up for it or um, it just came out of random, then you might want to just delete it, get going, and do something else. Um, has anyone's car ever got broken into? Yeah. What did they take? GPS. Your GPS? GPS? Yeah. Okay. Sunglasses. Sunglasses. <laughs> anyone else? A cell phone. Cell phone? Okay. So a cell phone and wallet. GPS. A wallet. So a wallet has a driver's license in it, has your address in it, maybe your credit cards. Uh, GPS, okay. if you can turn it on without a passcode, it has your home, has your address, maybe your last, or your most frequent stops. Maybe it knows where you go to school. Or um, maybe you go to work all the time and you're not sure where it's at. It's going to have your uh, work address. Uh, so things like that. So my car got broken into not too long ago um, in the middle of the day at a hospital. Um, they took um, my social security number. They took bank information uh, for uh, a nonprofit that I'm on the board with. They took uh, bank statements. They took my address. They had my birthday. Um, and it was all because after work, I was going to take that information, I was going to work on um, at home, my other stuff that I do outside of work. Uh, they had it all. What did I have to do? I literally had to, uh, where'd it go? It's not right. Uh, but I literally had to call um, all three credit, credit reporting agencies, uh, put an alert on my account. I had to call my bank, I had to get a new bank account. Uh, let's do more. Yeah. No, here it is. So I had to place a fraud alert. I had to call um, each of the uh, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. I had to look at the bank accounts for the next, for the past couple months after that, uh, just to make sure that no one used the actual account. Number. I closed the account. I opened up a new account. Uh, but it didn't take me a day to do this. It didn't take me a day to get my debit card. It didn't take me a day to get new checks. Um, it didn't take me, you know, a day to get uh, an alert placed on uh, my credit reports. It took it like a week. Took it two months, uh, just to make sure everything was smooth. And I'm uh, finally like at a point to where I'm like, uh, like I can breathe. Um, I have protection on my social security number. I can't get a loan right now. Uh, I can't get a credit card. I can't get a new cell phone. I can't get anything that's to do with my credit unless if I unblock it. Um, and I had to pay. I think it was $5.99 for each of those um, to have the credit block warrant. So it's a hassle. Um, so me thinking, like, 
why did I do that? Like you have to think about stuff like that. When you leave your car, don't leave your purse, don't leave your wallet, don't leave your GPS out in sight. Um, and if you have to, use your glove box, lock it up, put it in the trunk where people can't see it. Um, because you want to be able to keep your stuff protected and secure. So as you see, some of those things on there are like close the accounts that have been tampered with or open fraudulently, follow the police, police report, which I have to do, uh, and then make sure you place fraud alerts. And um, there's other things out there with credit report agencies as well. Um, you can do credit monitoring. Um, you can sign up for different companies that they have out there that you can watch it. Just always protect it and see what's going on with it. So some of the other things to go back to, um, be alert if you're missing mail, if you're missing bills. Um, you know your debit card's on the way or your credit card's on the way or um, maybe you called about your student transcript and it's not in your mailbox yet, uh, but you know that they sent it out last week. You wanna be on the alert of those things because now they have your information if it's not in there. Uh, denial for credit for no reason. You have a perfect score, you have um, awesome credit, you already have what you need, but you just got to decline for a five hundred dollar credit card. Um, why? You're questioning yourself, that's not right. Um, so you, you're able to go to annualcreditreport.com once a year for free to check your credit report. And you can actually go to annualcreditscore.com to check your credit score once a year. Uh, you can also call by phone, but you can also get it in the mail as well by that mailing address. But if you ever get declined for credit, you can also get a credit report and an understanding of why you got declined as well. And that's what you want to look into. Um, and then also inspecting your financial statements, um, savings account, credit card bill, um, anything to think of uh, in reference to like you as an individual. You can also go online to FTC, uh, it's federaltradecommission.gov forward slash ID theft. Uh, you can also call on a phone number or you can go by mail as well. And there's the website. Uh, anyone have any questions or reference to identity theft? Yeah. So, so I heard about Equifax. Equifax, is, all right. So, so Equifax 43, 43 million, is that right? Yeah, 43 million. Americans had their identity stolen. So are you guys aware of that? Yeah. Okay. Well, we have we have access to you. In your in your um, PowerPoint slides, there is the Equifax number. I would suggest we also have it at the bank, and we can, we can maybe we'll send this to you all too. In terms of the link, is to. Go on and please tell your family and your friends to see if you guys were impacted. I will tell you, I was impacted uh, in terms of my identity. And so what does that mean? All the things that uh, Dominic just shared with you, it's a, you hit the pause button in life, right? The, in terms of when you make sure you're protected. This is the stuff that's the most personal to you. That it is that you said somebody said, well, they're gonna take your personal information, they can do some really bad things with it. And so, there, there, but there's solutions out there. There's solutions out there in terms of, <clears throat> I'll make sure with you in terms of putting alerts on your, on your credit. You gotta remember, at the, we talk about budget and savings, when you're gonna go with your, after, after St. Mary's College is, your credit means a lot to your future employers. Okay, if you don't have good credit, it may, again, impact you in terms of, the, the, or put some roadblocks in front of some of your, your goals and dreams. And the same thing, so this identity theft, it's all interrelated. So who uses an ATM card? Everybody in the ATM card, right? And do I buy gas, my credit card at the, uh, the pump? At the, uh, okay, so one of the biggest things, frankly, that I deal with every day now, and I'll tell you, I've been in the banking business for over 30 years, and now over the last, it seems over the last three years in particular, and it's at a, it escalates with each month is identity theft. And quite frankly, the losses that we need to protect ourselves and our clients the banks. And at the, so when you go to an ATM, and I need, you need to tell you this to your family and friends, including the ones, the, the bb and ones here right on campus, is the first thing you need to do is you, you take your hand and you, and you pull, you, you, where you put your card in, you grab it, you grab that and you, and you shake it. You see, if it's loose, back away. Okay, 
Because what's happening is it may be a sign that somebody's put a skimming device inside of it. And so the way, way that uh, an ATM works is, is two, 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 two uh, points of control. One, you put your card in, which reaches it, and then you got to put your PIN code in, right? Next thing you need to do from a PIN stamp, this is all simple stuff. Put your hand over the, we typically have shields, but the reason those shields are going, why is this thing here? Well, there's because <clears throat> the next thing that a, that a criminal does is they put a small camera and they will see what your code is. So put your, it sounds simple, put your hand over and say, here's my code and put, input it. Those type of, <clears throat> and, and by the way, share that knowledge. Unfortunately now, this, the criminals are getting more and more advanced. Now the, it doesn't work, the skimming devices, sometimes we can't even, we can't pull them, you can't see them. But, do that at gas stations. I can't tell you how many times when I look at my, over the year, you know, I was actually on the phone with a guy who worked with me and says, I just got hit for $500 on Saturday. Somebody bought gas up in Michigan, and he lives in North Carolina. You guys ever had that happen to you? Anyway, well, it happens a lot. It happens a lot. And somebody was talking about uh, identity theft in terms of, you know, the, um, just being astute in terms of the, the emails people get. I'll tell you what's a big one I deal with. Bank. I get a phone call from a client that upset that hey listen I just I just sent money out on a uh, to uh, to such and such and I don't think it's I don't know, now I, I, I can't get it back well it's really hard when the money's gone to get it back for example <laughs> this one's always you're gonna laugh a little bit it baffles me it happens a lot is that somebody says why well, won the lottery. The lottery, they says, they says, well, win the lottery. So what do you mean? And I had to send a thousand dollars to, and then I'm, then I'm supposed to get thirty thousand dollars back. I said, okay, well, that didn't happen, right? You probably, maybe you guys heard stories like this. And then you know, it, it comes down to basic, basic. I said, well, did you ever play the lottery? <laughs> and I said, actually, no, I didn't. But see, in the moment, there's something there, right? Again, when I talk about. We all know this, all of us, we know but what you do, right? So the, the, you gotta make sure you're kind of connecting the know and the do at all times. So this identity theft, don't, it's real. And it's getting more and more with technology. You gotta protect your information, protect your social security, protect your, your passcodes. It's uh, because you can turn your life upside down. I'll tell you, being like, when I, when I, when I, when I went on the Equifax website, I said, uh-oh, impacted. What does that mean? Is that, does that impact my social security when I go retire? Does that retire, uh, impact my 401k plans? So how do you know what I do? Now there's solutions out there, but you gotta protect it. It's you, it's you own it. All that stuff, you know, it's, it's your personal information. Be careful who you share it with, passcodes. Like, let me ask you this. My son, my youngest son is uh, uh, 19, he's at uh, UNC. Uh, and, and so, you know, this cell phone, he's always on the cell phone. And I have, do you guys have, pet, before you get your cell phone, do you have to put a passcode in? Is that, okay, I'm not gonna put it. He doesn't. And I'm like, CJ, what, what's up with that? No, I stop with that. Well, let me tell you. A party, phone down, right? I said, you know, he's out, he doesn't have his passcode, so he picks it up. You know, all, uh, and somebody may have some ill intent to open it up, see different emails, to pick up the different, has some, uh, you know, different account numbers and his notes or everything there. It's there. Take advantage of these, you know, the, the, the you know, some of these roadblocks to protect your information. Go the extra step. It's worth it at the end. And the, the neat thing that Chris is talking about is with the Equifax website, it is, I put it up on the screen for you guys, it's EquifaxSecurity2017.com. I recommend going to it, and when you go to it, it says, what can you do? It allows you to enroll and uh, protect yourself and monitor your credit for free for a year, uh, but you can also see if you're impacted as well. And through that, uh, what you do is you put, I believe, your last name in the six, your last six of your social, and it will tell you whether you're impacted or not. And if you were, what you do is you sign up for the free credit monitoring for a year. Um, and typically, they'll get back to you, not in a day, not in two days. It may take a week yeah. for you to get that information, because as Chris was impacted, I was impacted as well. And I'm still waiting for my email. 
Um, I signed up about a week ago, but they haven't sent the email yet for me to log in and so forth. But I recommend going here. Um, it doesn't matter whether you just turned 18 and you just had credit, um, or if you're 50 years old, it, it could happen to anybody. So. Uh, I, I want to speak to that. I'm sorry. Is there a question? Uh, yeah, so I was uh, wondering about interstate travel. So uh, recently I went up to Boston, Massachusetts um, for the weekend, and I uh, went to make a purchase for uh, I was at a restaurant, and my card was declined. I got an alert from the fraud center uh, that there's potential fraud. So I uh, contacted my bank and I told them my information just to make sure that it was me, not somebody else. How do you notify banks um, if, it's, if you're leaving for short terms, uh, short amounts of time away from home or the general vicinity of the state that you're in uh, so, so that they don't put holes on your account and so on? Great question. One, one thing you can do, the back of your debit card or your credit card has an 800 number. You can call that phone number and that call center, they can just put a note on there. Um, I used to always uh, let the bank know, even though I work for them, that I will be out of the country or in a different state just to make sure they don't block my card. So it's always good to have more than one card um, it, just in case something happens. But I let them know I'm out of town so they don't block it. So I don't have that moment where it's declined. But don't be embarrassed if your card's ever declined or anything like that. Because it could be that situation where someone did use your card. Right. You just want to know. They want to protect you. They want to make sure someone didn't, you know, right. uh, snag your wallet and take off to Boston or whatever. But call that number and just let them know, hey, I'm going to be traveling on these dates. Uh, they still may, as a preventative measure, because whether you're in Boston or not, how do, you, how do how does your financial institution know that while you're in Boston, you didn't lose your wallet while you were in Boston, someone else is using your wallet? They're like, oh no, it's okay, he's in Boston, he told us. So they may still block your card, so it's not a guarantee they're not going to block your card. But always have a second source of payment with you, um, especially when you're traveling. Um, in that instance, so what did you, they sent you an alert text? Yeah, so I, uh, that was on my debit card, yeah. I, had a, I had two bank. Uh, different banks, Bank of America, and a local bank, and uh, I use another bank account, another bank card to pay, uh, and afterwards I call them uh, in a private area. Yeah. Yep. So that happens to me a lot. Is that the, again? So is that the, when it happens, your first reaction, what the hell's going on? You know, and and, and you know, Liz is is that right? Yeah, just okay. Somebody's to try to protect you. Because what happens is is that there's the there's logarithms tracking your guys' behaviors in terms of your credit cards right now, in terms of for, from, a, from identity. Because this identity theft is big, it's real. And so to protect, and so what happens is I get a text and I say, you know, hey, is everything okay? And I can text back and it, 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 you, and Frank, and I bet you it's a service that you can put on your card today, if you have cards like that, if you want to do that. But I always, when I go out of the country, typically call, I, um, my, my credit card or the bank and let them know I'm going to be out. And I think the see in your situation, what Liz just said, right? You have two, you had two, another, you had a, you had a backup plan. Um, you know, th this Equifax stuff is really important. You're going to hear a lot more about it in the news because it's just, it's just not over yet. But as a lender, a lot of times folks come to me, they want to finance, you know, a home or a car. So think about it, if someone stole your, your identity and you weren't aware, I mean, like Dominic was saying, you get free credit monitoring for a year. They will alert you at any time someone's pinging your credit because if uh, I have, uh, it's happened many times where people come to me for a loan and I'm like, okay, I just review everything on their credit report, like, uh, that's not mine. It's like, whoa, whoa, this is gonna kinda hold them up from getting that loan. And if you're, you're, you're trying to, you know, you're in need of a car, you're at a car dealership, you wanna buy this car, and if someone stole your, your identity, I mean, that is really annoying. It's, it's rude, you feel violated. Um, so it's good to t be proactive in protecting your credit. Um, and I can speak all day about credit, so hopefully we get invited back to speak about that. But it's really important. This is, uh, your credit rating is important. And I would tell you, if you do find something on your credit, if you, if you take an initiative to go back and go on the website, you can always dispute it. You can always dispute it. That's not me. They'll ask you to explain. You, you mail on a letter, and you're able to take care of that. It's not going to show immediately that it's off your credit, but you're able to do it. And if it's on one credit bureau, it may be on the other two. Or if it's only TransUnion, it may not be on the other two. So you always want to look at all three, not just one. Um, and another close thing, too, is uh, 
if your name is close to someone else's name, always take a look at that. Maybe if you're a parent or if you're a junior or if you're a third or a second, um, that will hit you too because um, I've seen in instances where uh, a son will have their father's information on their credit by mistake. Uh, so yeah, it's always there. We had a question up front. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if it's true that it's safe to use credit cards or debit cards. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, if you want to well, well, as a lender, I, I, I believe that it is safer to use your credit card because it's usually backed by a major company such as Visa. Um, and a debit card is linked to what type of account? Your checking account. So if you get a direct deposit, that's, that's your money. That is almost, that second better than cash in your hand. So if your debit card is stolen, they're taking money that you've already had in your hand, uh, already had, yeah. And, uh, but your bank, you should have a really good relationship with your bank. So um, if anything ever happens, you contact your local bank and they're gonna work with you. If it wasn't you taking your money, I mean, that's just not right. We wanna make sure that you have your money. Again, it's part of just protecting your money. Um, credit cards are one thing because uh, right now I have a dispute on my credit card um, because I went to a retailer, I went to Rundle Mills, I took my daughter there to go to Dave & Buster's and she did some shopping and I was just like, okay, it was her birthday, so I was like, swipe, swipe, or insert with a chip. And had one machine, I remember I went to the Models and I stuck my card in the machine, it didn't take, so like, it's not taking. So I was like, do I swipe? The, the customer service girl wasn't very helpful because <laughs> I was asking her, I'm like, okay, it's not taking, what do I do? I'm waiting for me to do something here, I want to pay for, the, for these uh, pants for my daughter. And she was just like, just, oh no, no, just insert it again. I did receive one receipt, and then I noticed that my credit card had um, two transactions for the same amount, but it was under a different name. One was under Models, and one was under Build a Better Body, which it might have been a sub name or another merchant name. But that machine let me swipe and insert my card. Um, so always check that, but chip is definitely, it's wonderful. The chip um, is wonderful because it's a lot more secure than swiping your card these days. A magnetic strip is just such old technology, so I'm glad we're moving away from that. Um, but uh, I called the credit card company, and they're, I, they're like, hey, did you contact the merchant? And I was like, yes, I spoke with the manager, and he said he was sorry, that's an extent of what they're gonna do, but I'm very grateful that BB&T and, and Visa are working to protect that, and they're just gonna send me a form I'm gonna say I did not make the second transaction, I did make the first transaction, and I'll get my money back. So just be careful, be a good consumer, like Chris was saying, you know, check so your accounts. The, the only thing I'd add to, and it's a really good question about the debit and credit. So if you do use the credit and not the debit, is that the, I'd ask yourself to make sure you're disciplined so that you pay your credit card off, right? Because you get, when we talk about budget and savings, and so if you say, well, you know what, from a safety reason and a credit, you know, I use credit card a lot, um, but is that I've got to be disciplined within my budget that I make sure I pay it off every month. And you can earn cash back points too if you're using a your credit card. Like you said, be very disciplined. Credit cards aren't for everyone at every stage in their life. Um, I got a little too credit card happy at one point when I was younger, but today I'm very disciplined with paying my credit card off. I get a cash back incentive and I, you know, receive roughly a thousand bucks a year back in cash back just for using a, a credit card vessel to make sure it <coughs> and paying it back. As soon as I swipe that card, I'm just transferring money to pay it off. And I would say to their point too is uh, be disciplined, like, like Chris was saying, because in the beginning when I started using my credit card for everything, I got over overwhelmed and I literally said, you know what, I'm just gonna start paying it off. I'd spend ten dollars in gas, I'm gonna take ten dollars from my checking account and pay right off. And I did that for every transaction. I said, what am I doing? Like I gotta be more disciplined. So at the end of the month I was like, you know what? I know I can only spend what I have in my account because I don't want to pay interest. I don't want any fees on my account. I wanna make sure that if I have a hundred dollars in my checking account, guess what? That's all I can spend on my credit card for that month. And that's all I did. And I just had to make sure, all right, I know my deposit's coming in. I know I'm gonna get X amount of dollars from here. That's how much I can spend on my credit card. And I do that to this day. So it's been years and years and all my bills go on my credit card rather than my checking account because, you know, to your question, um, I don't want my cash to be held up. I don't want overdraft protection to kick in and they start taking from my savings that I build my life on. Um, where with the credit card, they just put a hole in the credit. I don't have to pay it back. I don't do anything with it until they, the dispute is final. Um, so yeah. Any other questions? 
have any questions about anything that we talked about today? Comments, suggestions, anything? Is this helpful? Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. That's good. Well, listen, we appreciate you guys coming. Go see Hawks. And I thank you for coming out on a Friday, on a beautiful day. Yeah. And um, do you mind if we get a picture with you guys? Yeah, we'd love to get a picture with you. I told you, I'm going to do and don't hesitate. Listen, t please take advantage of the uh, of the, the you know the links that our you know, career centers put out. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Oh, and you know, regardless of where you bank, I, I, I'm very passionate about sharing financial education. My business cards are at the ends of each table. If you guys have questions or call me to say, hey, you were at the college, uh, I just have a question. Feel free to call or email me. So, and I appreciate it. Now, I'm, I'm periodically down at the campus, probably uh, you know once a month doing various things around the campus. So if I'm ever down here, I don't mind meeting with you. So, but again, thank you all, and uh, yeah, we love you. Appreciate you, you guys. Uh, thank you guys. Let's take a quick second, second to thank our presenters. Pleasure, man. This is this is. I can't tell how excited I'm to be back here on this campus. So when I went to school, this is where the president. Lived. So can somebody, can, can somebody? Yeah, I, I can.